Hi everyone out there, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanna open up a conversation about a topic that I think is really, really important. <laughs> We live in a world where I feel like it's so easy to become obsessive or really hyper vigilant about the foods that we eat and the food choices that we make. Um, I feel like for a lot of us, we can kind of get stuck in this constant mental battle of what's good versus bad or what's healthy versus unhealthy or toxic versus non-toxic, clean versus dirty. And let me know if you can relate to this or not. I think it's something that a lot of us can relate to. Um, for me personally, I have had my own experiences with kind of getting into that sort of mindset of good versus bad, which sort of was born out of my experiences with IBS and dealing with um, a, a very long period of time of really severe digestive health problems that started out as food phobia. I had a lot of fears of how foods would be you know, making me feel, because um, for a long time I, I really couldn't tolerate a lot of foods, but it ended up developing slowly over time to just a general fear of what foods were doing to me. And I don't think that the issue is that we don't know enough about making healthy food choices. I think for the most part, we all do know what's good for us to do, but I think actually what can often be the issue is that we know too much. There's kind of this oversaturation of health information that leads us to feeling either completely confused or fearful or, you know, kind of obsessed. So the question is, how? do we draw that line? How, how do we draw that line between caring about our health, of course, caring about our health and nutrition, but also not becoming obsessive about it or fearful or um, feeling like we need to be perfect. So today I want to share with you five ways to begin to create a healthier relationship with food. And the points that I'm gonna be sharing with you today are really just a starting point. They're just some things for you to start thinking about and reflecting on. Um, I encourage you to take out a journal and reflect on some of the things that I'm gonna be talking about today. Reframing your mindset and you know learning to trust yourself again and undoing potentially many years of diet beliefs and, and behaviors or thoughts and emotions that we have around food can take time and in some cases working with a professional um, can be really helpful and might be something that you feel is best for you to do in which case that's awesome and it's all part of the process and it's all part of the journey so with all of this being said um, let's get into it Number one is to identify your thoughts and emotions around food. A really great place to start is simply bringing your awareness to the thoughts that you have or the stories that you tell yourself about food. Do you have pleasant thoughts? Do you celebrate food? Or do you fear it a lot of the time? Do you see food as a source of nourishment and enjoyment or as a way to punish yourself for not eating well enough or for not living up to some kind of standard. We can develop thoughts and emotions and beliefs from a number of different places, from our culture to our upbringing, our social circles, our family, our socioeconomic status, um, the beliefs that we have, what we see, what we read about, what we see online, what we see other people doing. Take a moment to ask yourself where these thoughts and these emotions that you have around food right now, where they are coming from. Tune in to your individual needs. We all have food rules we follow, whether we realize it or not. For example, we might have food rules that gluten is bad, that dairy is unhealthy, that meat is bad, that we have to have X number of grams of carbohydrates per day, or that we can't eat past 6 p.m., or, you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We all have some variety of food rules, and the food rules that we have aren't necessarily always bad. Um, they can be actually quite helpful. It's just that what matters is that we want to actually tune into them and ask ourselves if they are in fact working for us and if they're kind of in alignment with us and our bodies and our lifestyle. Now it is great to have 
some general guidelines of what is healthy for us to do, right? It's good for us to know what is what is healthy for us, right? Things like eating lots of whole vegetables and fruits and complex carbohydrates and protein and drinking lots of water and herbal teas and things like that. It's, it's helpful for us to know these things. But sometimes what can happen is we get kind of sucked into this really rigid way of following certain kinds of plans or guidelines um, and we stop asking ourselves if it's actually working for us and our body and our unique needs. So you can start here by making a list of all of the food rules that you have and if you start to actually take the time to think about them you might realize that you have more food rules than you even realized before. So make a list of them, write them out. Then simply ask yourself if each one is still aligned with you. Do you find this rule uh, still to be very helpful for you? Does your body still feel good following this or do you feel restricted in some way? Or if you imagine yourself following this rule for years and years to come or the rest of your life, does that feel good to imagine that? Or what does it feel like to imagine your life without this rule? One of the principles of intuitive eating from the book Intuitive Eating by Evelyn Tribble and Elise Resch, which is a really great book, highly recommend it, is to let go of the voice that tells you that you have to eat a certain way, a certain amount, or you have to restrict certain foods. Now, of course, of course, there are times where a medical condition such as an allergy warrants a food restriction. That happens, of course, and we need to honor that and respect that. Um, you know, like I said, for example, for me, in the past, years ago, um, I actually I did restrict a number of foods because I had such severe digestive problems. And while that was helpful for me for a time, it eventually was no longer helpful for me. But it took me time um, to start to feel comfortable with reintroducing some foods back into my diet again because I had a lot of residual beliefs about those foods. When I learned that I felt totally fine with these foods in my diet again. And also when I remembered and respected the fact that my body is quite a good compass, it does a pretty good job at letting me know if I need to make an adjustment, I realized that I needed to let go of kind of that diet mentality that was beginning to control my life and give me a lot of anxiety around food on a regular basis. Now you might think here that if you give yourself permission to eat all foods, you might feel like I will not be able to stop myself. And let me just clarify this here, that does not mean throwing everything that you know about health out the window. The freedom that comes from allowing foods, all foods, to have a place in your diet actually makes healthy eating a lot easier. Studies very clearly demonstrate that when we restrict foods, it actually makes them uh kind of have more power over us. It makes us want them more and crave them more. And these food restrictions lead to actually more unhealthy behaviors like binging or overeating. And allowing foods back into your diet that you may have previously restricted for a really long time because you thought they were bad or you were afraid of them, it might mean that you might temporarily want to eat a lot of them and, and you, you may eat a lot of them, but over time, Eventually, all foods start to become kind of neutral and those foods that you previously avoided for so long start to lose their thrill, their novelty, they're no longer exciting, they're just another food that's there, that's available. Trust that your body has the innate ability to communicate with you that it doesn't want to eat chocolate cake all of the time, all day, every day. Without you having to force it or muster willpower, your body actually has the ability to let you know that. And this becomes especially apparent when we really truly honor our hunger. We are born with an innate ability to eat intuitively. Our bodies are hardwired to send us cues and signals all the time about what we need. It tells us when we're hungry, when we're full, what foods look desirable, what foods don't look desirable. But when we suppress our needs instead of honoring them, maybe we are skipping meals or we're going too long uh, without eating or we 
are limiting the amount of food that we're eating at in one sitting, even when we're still hungry. We're setting ourselves up for feeling famished and experiencing uncontrollable eating behaviors that lead to us feeling really bad and as though we can't trust ourselves. We think to ourselves, I clearly need to follow a diet plan or I clearly need to start restricting foods because I'm just gonna eat all of them. Uh, when a lot of the times, we just need to honor our hunger and tune in and feed ourselves. And I've experienced this in my own life many times. I'm sure that you have too. If I ever, maybe I don't have a big enough breakfast or I wait too long before I eat lunch, maybe it's been five or more hours where I've just totally ignored my hunger cues, they reach a point where it's, you know, absolutely ravenous. My appetite is so strong um, and I am craving sugar. I'm craving salt or really decadent foods or you know convenient foods. Kind of to the point where I don't have the mental or the physical energy to make myself a nourishing meal. But when we honor our hunger, when we listen to that uh, and, we, and we eat, when we start to experience those initial you know, gentle hunger signals, we can make much more sensible choices and, um, and feel good in our body. So we can begin to listen to our body's signals better by asking ourselves a few different things. We can ask ourselves something as simple as, hey, am I hungry right now? Tuning into ourselves at some point during the day, am I hungry right now? What are my hunger levels like right now? Or when we're in the middle of a meal, we can ask ourselves, am I comfortably full or am I starting to approach feeling comfortably full? We can also ask ourselves, do I have a ravenous appetite right now because I haven't eaten enough today? Developing this awareness takes time, it takes practice, it can take you, you know, a while before you start to implement these things on a more regular basis. But when you do, you'll start to notice that you can trust your body and, and it's, you know, food and eating becomes a lot more enjoyable. And this kind of subject here, this, this um, point, on honoring your hunger is also another principle in the book Intuitive Eating. Um, again, I will leave that linked below. I've just found it to be a really helpful book in, you know, in my life. Envision your healthy relationship with food. Take a few moments to determine how you want to feel about food and, and your food choices. For example, you might want to feel a sense of flexibility with the food choices that you make, or you might want to get out of a restrictive binging cycle that you find yourself in sometimes. The next thing to do here is to identify some blocks that might be in your way uh, to experiencing that healthy relationship with food that you desire. Is it that you feel stressed around mealtime sometimes? Is it that you aren't taking the time to sit down and just be mindful with your meals? Is it that you skip meals a lot of the time? Or is there some sort of fear that is standing in your way? So for example, some common fears are that that we feel like we are gonna lose control around food or uh, we're gonna gain weight or we fear that we're gonna be unhealthy if we don't stick to the specific diet guidelines or diet rules that we are following. Once you've identified some of these blocks, start to brainstorm some of the action steps that you can take to start to experience that healthier relationship with food that you envision for yourself. So I hope that this was a helpful starting point for you to start to think about and re reflect on some ways that you could start cultivating a healthier relationship with food. Healing of any kind, including healing your relationship with food, is not linear. It never is. Nothing ever just goes, you know, point A to point B perfectly to where you need to go in one fell swoop. There's a lot of ups and downs along the journey and that's totally okay, I have been there as well. And I would love to hear from you. Let me know in the comments below if this is a topic that you feel like you can relate to or if you have any thoughts or experiences when it comes to kind of your relationship with food and maybe how that's shifted over time or you know the different experiences that you have had. Let me know in the comments below and I will see you all in the next one.